Hey YouTube world, my name is Sean Rocky Jeech and I teach how to Airbnb. In this video, I'm gonna give you a lot of information of many topics in one video as kind of like a big tour of the industry so that way you can learn what there is to learn and you can just deep dive on this YouTube channel, learn everything you wanna learn about how to run an Airbnb business. And this video will be kind of like a, a super highway of information. See, I've been teaching this for five years. Um, on YouTube for free. And over the last year, I've dropped about 22 major topic-based videos that I think even a lot of you who are fans of this channel haven't seen all those videos. So I'm just gonna post a screenshot of a video and explain the biggest gem per video in this one. And that way, if any of these topics ring true to you, like, oh, I wanna learn about that, you can find the video of interest and go and learn everything about either pricing strategy, photography, interior design, guest communication, whatever it is that suits your fancy. Spoiler alert, out of the 22 or 23 videos I'm gonna show you, only only one has to do specifically with rental arbitrage. Isn't that strange? I think this YouTube channel has gotten a reputation as the rental arbitrage channel, but the truth is out of all the places on the internet to learn how to do Airbnb, this is still the only YouTube channel that'll teach you everything you wanna know unabashedly on how to run an Airbnb business. I have 150 properties, over 30 staff members, and we deal with everything under the sun because we are in 10 cities as well. So without further ado, cheers, and let's get to video number one. And these are not gonna be any particular orders. So video number one, this one is the top tips for market research. This video, what I teach you to do is how to use the Airbnb platform specifically to conduct market research. And a lot of people think that you need to use AirDNA or something like that. Now, the coolest thing that I think we showed is when you search for listings and you search in an area on Airbnb, you use map view. If you search for one night in an area, you might see 100 listings. You search for two nights, you'll see like 115 or 130 listings. You search for three nights, that could go up to 160. This is an example of how when you do market research on Airbnb, you not only see all of the listings available and you could click on each one, but we're starting to see trends in data, which is that there are possibly 160 listings that are available, but at a three night minimum, and only 100 listings are available with a one night minimum, meaning that some competition have either two night minimums or three night minimums. We go way deeper on this video on all these other things that you can learn about listings, but this starts to help you learn what your competition's up to and maybe some strategies that you can utilize in your neighborhood to become more visible on Airbnb and get more bookings than your competition. The second video, Rank on the First Page of Airbnb, talks about the Airbnb algorithm. Algorithm starts to collect information kind of in three phases. An Airbnb listing has a one month boost where it starts to collect information, views, occupancy percentage, stuff like that. And then as a listing matures, it starts to look at, you know, like more trailing data, but it starts to wedge you into a permanent fixture, like a permanent ranking on Airbnb. And then as the listing gets older, the maintenance phase, it's looking at all of your back data, like your reviews and your trailing occupancy percentage and stuff like that. What the algorithm is looking for in the beginning and what's looking for later are actually different. And this video teaches you how to manage your Airbnb ranking for your listings lifetime, not just getting started and not just an old listing. It's hyper valuable for all hosts new and old. This third video, 1K a day of using PeerSpace, was my first of a few PeerSpace videos that I've done where I teach you how to use PeerSpace as an Airbnb host. Now, this video, what's really educational about this is PeerSpace is a different customer type and what you provide is different. Well, sure, you're using a house or an apartment, you're using the same square footage, but because somebody's using the property for a different reason, what they're looking for is different. Your photos are gonna be different, stuff like that. So this is a deep dive on how to make your Airbnb listing or your verbal listing PeerSpace ready so you can start getting bookings for like productions, movie shoots, photo shoots, wedding proposals. Um, that's one that I actually just hear, had a, here at my penthouse last week and it was like the most adorable thing ever. We've had a couple wedding proposals, which is really nice. So you can prepare for peer space with that video. Video number four is the top 10 things you need to know to run your Airbnb business in 2022. And what I think is really important about this video is we get into more than just the nuts and bolts of the business, but we start talking about the state of the market in a way. And we predicted that the market was gonna get overly competitive and we predicted some volatility in the market, go us. And this video is gonna give you more conceptual tips to stay competitive and ways to approach, I guess you're learning ways to approach how to look at your business appropriately because all of my other videos uh, by nature teach you do X, do Y, and then get Z result. This will teach you kind of how to go through that critical thinking process of coming up with some of your own ideas to become the most competitive Airbnb on your block. The next video is the pro Airbnb kitchen video. This one is actually really, really fun. This was a deep dive on how to prepare your kitchen for Airbnb. And if you don't know why this is important, the kitchen is in itself an amenity, right? A hotel doesn't have a kitchen. A hotel doesn't have a full-size fridge half the time. 
right? And this is one of the things that separates us from a hotel. And as your listing goes from a studio to a three bedroom to a four bedroom house, what is expected from your kitchen changes. And if you want two night stays, or if you want a month long stay, what goes in your kitchen changes. So this video is a super long deep dive of everything you should consider for your kitchen as an amenity, as a competitive item in your home, and how to present that stuff to get the types of customers that you want. The next video is actually pretty recent. This one's called Your Cleaning Fee Sucks, or Seven Reasons Why Your Cleaning Fee Is Overpriced. The reason why this is cool is not only does it tell you how to look at your cleaning fee as in a competitive like marker where uh, your competitors could beat you on your cleaning fee, because somebody might choose to book your competitor as opposed to you if they don't like your fees. But the fact that we give you seven reasons reasons why your cleaning fee is off starts to give you this really cool meta of the space and starts to explain to you how even the littlest things can become competitive where you win more money than your competition. And as this industry does get more competitive, looking at this industry for what it is as a competitive business is going to help you. At a low level, it's going to teach you how to set your cleaning fee, but at a high level, it's going to make you really think, wow, there's a lot of room to crush my competition in this space. And that video kind of will wake you up to that. This next video is about a hidden feature on Airbnb that'll increase your profits by like 30%. And what that hidden feature is, is the multi-calendar. This video will teach you how to access the multi-calendar and give you some pro tips on how we use the multi-calendar with 150 properties, including how we use rule sets. And that's gonna be really, really big for you. Anybody with property should be using the multi-calendar, should be changing their prices on the multi-calendar and should be using rule sets. The next one is actually about big business credit. This is not typically the type of stuff I talk about on the channel, but as we grow and as we go into volatile markets, if you can get a really good deal, either buying a house that my best friend's a real estate agent, he's talking about buying new builds under ask, like 20% under ask on a new build. If you can get a good deal like that by you know a new build person getting really nervous and selling properties at a discount, you might be able to pop a good value on a property, but you might need some extra cash to buy the furniture. You might max out the cash available because you had such a good deal. With arbitrage, we can get landlords to give us 10 weeks of rent for free. That's an example of such a good deal with arbitrage. Now in this case, if you're doing a lot of deal flow, you're doing a lot of rapid growth, you might need some credit. And so this video talks about how we've gotten credit, what you need to do with a new business to start setting up trade lines and setting your entity up to be able to qualify for credit down the road. And then I give you some pro tips on how to use credit and how not to be dumb with credit because credit is dangerous inherently. And that video will walk you through um, that philosophy. This everything will burn one real estate investors watch this video. This is an important video if you do own your property and you have co-hosts. This video, the biggest tip that I can give you from this video is for owners of properties to start looking at their bottom line from the very beginning of revenue instead of looking at their bottom line from after a co-host gets paid. A lot of landlord real estate persons who own their properties see co-hosting as this necessary thing that can't change. But if you woke up as an owner and realized that you could be your own co-host, that it's actually decently simple to have your own housekeepers, your own customer service staff, and you did this apples to apples comparison of your expenses, if you had five or seven of your own properties and had your own co-host team, you wouldn't pay 25% of your revenue anymore you'd pay 10% of your revenue. And that 15% difference is huge. So this video gives you that kind of top-down look and really challenges your perspective as an owner as to why you're using a co-host and why you're hiring third-party cleaners. This will help you reduce your costs and make you mega competitive in the space. And you know your competition might go under and then you can buy their properties because they're failing because the reason why they're losing money is because the co-host is the one making money, but there's not enough money left for the rest of the owner to make their money too. And that could actually happen. The next video is about lifetime value. This concept has 10X my Airbnb business. Now, the reason why this is so big is when we make decisions as a business owner, when we're under stress, we make very short-sighted decisions. This video encourages you to think the long game on as many decisions as you can. So for example, we talk about hiring housekeepers. Well, the normal housekeeper that you pay might be $40 plus per hour. You might pay a flat cleaning fee to have your place you know, clean, like $60 for a one bedroom. That could come out to $40 per hour. Now, if you hired your own housekeepers, you could get them for $15 an hour. And a lot of people argue with me on this, but my students do it left and right. We've got hundreds of students succeeding on paying hourly for the housekeepers at a good rate. Well, to save $25 per hour on a housekeeper on a 40 hour work week, that's a thousand hours a week that you could be saving on 40 hours of work. Well, at that point, lifetime, if you have a housekeeper who sticks with you for months, you're talking tens of thousands of dollars of savings. So because of the lifetime value of a housekeeper, our argument is you could spend $3,000 trying to hire somebody and you actually still come out ahead. 
where a lot of people are stingy about hiring. They run a little job ad. They don't do hiring bonuses, stuff like that. And if you change your mindset on this and think more lifetime, I'll gladly pay a housekeeper two grand to start with me if I know they're, they're going to stick for three months because we break even and we start making a lot of money on that one person. So yeah, we'll spend money to hire because of lifetime value. We do video on smart locks. This is the Scythely smart lock. I do have a link in my link tree where you can get a discount, which is cool. But even more than just what smart locks we're using, we're talking about how we utilize them and how it affects our operational flow and how it affects our check-in procedures. And we give you some like pro tips on how to manage a lot of doors. And so it's really cool because we're talking about technology, which is a rare thing, but we're also talking about the nuts and bolts of operations, you know, and guest check-in in this video. So watch that one too. I guess I'm saying watch all these, aren't I? Yeah, I'm saying watch all these. And I'm saying to like the video, hopefully by now, subscribe because all these videos, you could have seen these if you were subscribed, but you probably missed most of them. This video is Airbnb air cover explained. Now this video is important because Airbnb's air cover is materially different than its old host protection. Air cover includes paying for pets, paying for smoking, giving you a loss of income protection, all sorts of stuff. But how they go through the claim process is slightly different too. This video will give you a deep dive in one video so you, you're better prepared to run an air cover claim. And um, actually, spoiler alert, I have another video, very new video, talking about filing claims, teaser. Now, the next video is how I hack the algorithm. This is super important because it talks about all of the little things that a listing can have that makes you more competitive than your competitors. And the way that I like to look at this is every house or every listing on Airbnb has an equal shot at doing good on the algorithm, right? Your listing has just as much of a shot as any, but there's some things that we just don't do. There's some things that most hosts don't think to do. So there's something that you could spend 10 bucks on that no one else has thought of and it immediately gives you a bigger listing boost than other people because there's really underserviced parts of our listings. And so hacking the algorithm is really about hacks, about shortcuts to get to the very top of the Airbnb ranking without blowing the bank on buying a hot tub, for example. The next video is about 10 Airbnb hidden site links. More so than just watching this video, if you load this video and click the description, it's going to give you the links for all 10 of these. Now these 10 links can be extremely important. For example, if Airbnb stops paying you, starts holding your payouts, it could be because of a tax form that you didn't fill out. And that link is in the description, for example. These 10 site links are, can be like a fast forward, like, oh, I need to do something and I don't know where it is. That video will teach you about some like little known spots of the website that allow you to run your business much faster. One of my friends was missing thousands of dollars from Airbnb until he clicked on the one site link and now he got his money. So like this thing will actually make you thousands of dollars if you just reference the video. The next one is about Airbnb design ideas. Now I don't typically talk a lot about design, but I got really nerdy on this video. I was on the back of furnishing a ton of pro properties at a high rise in Philadelphia and I did a lot of my own design. And we were trying to decide what design styles work best for us. So this video talks to you about like four main avenues of design, how to decide which one you might want in your market based on market research and looking at your competition. So it's more than just design ideas, but competitive design ideas. And it's, it's like a strategic thinking on which design idea might make you the most money. And the answer will change market to market. So this video will service everybody if you're thinking about it the right way. The next video is a pricing strategy masterclass. And I will say this is probably my favorite thing to discuss. I'm like a super nerd on pricing strategy. This is a big, long video about everything that you could possibly consider in pricing strategy. So that way, instead of paying for Wheelhouse or Price Labs and just trusting that it knows what it's doing, you'll know more about your pricing strategy than Wheelhouse or than Price Labs will. Now you can still use them to automate price, but if you watch that video, you'll better understand what's going on. So that way you'll know if you agree or disagree with the choices that that software is making. Otherwise you can skip having a software and just change prices on your own. And I really recommend that you do that anyway before you get a pricing software because getting a pricing software and not knowing what it's doing is like buying a Tesla and not ever getting a driver's license for example. The next one is an Airbnb photography masterclass. I shot this while I was in Philadelphia, that high rise I was mentioning. And we talk about how to properly frame photos, what photos you want in your listing and how photos can just turn out bad. You can always pay a professional photographer to take your photos, but we noticed we just had a, a group of photos done in Seabrook, Texas, totally not a neighborhood you'd expect us to pick up Airbnbs, but that photographer did a bad job. That was a real estate photographer that tried to say that they were an Airbnb photographer and they had decent real estate photos, but when it came time to take Airbnb photos, they just missed a whole bunch of stuff because selling a short-term rental is different than selling a piece of real estate uh, through the photos. And this masterclass will teach you how to take your own photos but what to take photos of and what you really want to show in the photos. Like for example, the coffee station. If you don't show your coffee station in the photos, people won't notice that you have decaf and tea if you have it. And so your photos are the most important part of your listing. And this 
video will give you that. Everything you need to know to start your Airbnb business. This video, not only does it teach you everything that you need to know by giving you the list of subjects, but what I think is really cool about this video is this video teaches you what you don't need to know. And a lot of people get overwhelmed when starting a business. They think they need to know everything. They get paralysis by analysis. So in this video, I lay out in phases. Well, for the first week, first month, first three months, Here's the topics you should study today, and here's the stuff you can skip. Here's the stuff you can skip for a long time. Here's the stuff you can pay a professional and it won't really cost you that much money. Here's the stuff that is insignificant, but here's the stuff that matters. And so this video helps you discern what you actually need to know, but what you don't need to know too, so you don't overload your head and get scared and don't start your business. Because the worst thing for you is if you didn't start your Airbnb business because you were overwhelmed. And with how fast I talk, I could imagine that you're overwhelmed by now already. So please just know that these videos are singular topic subjects and it's not nearly as overwhelming as I'm probably making it out to be, but I tend to just water hose people. So thank you so much for um, sticking in this far in the video. And <laughs> let's get to the next one. This next one, how I set up an Airbnb property. What's cool about this is we don't really talk about design as much, but we talk about choosing the right pieces of furniture. We choose strategically what is going to allow us to make money for a while, what's gonna allow us to clean the stuff appropriately, uh, not have to change up furniture all the time, not have to worry about things breaking or if things break, how to plan for them to break, what stuff kind of just goes bad fast, what stuff doesn't look good. And you know, there's a lot of implications because if you buy cheap furniture from Ikea, you're gonna have some problems. So we talk about many different, like there's seven different considerations when buying stuff for your Airbnb in this video deep dives on that. So that way you can think about like the durability and the aesthetic and kind of the congruency and how available stuff is. This is a super important video. And this one actually went a little bit viral for good reason. So check it out. Here's the only arbitrage one in the whole list. These are my four pitch points for picking up a property. When I teach students rental arbitrage, I'm teaching them to convince a landlord to give up a property. Say, hey, give me your property. Let me do short-term rentals. These four pitch points are four ways that a landlord could look at us, short-term rental operators, as cooler and a better bet than a long-term tenant. And when you do arbitrage, because you have to convince somebody to give you a property, this is an element of influence and this is a sale. This video will teach you to approach that conversation with a landlord like a sale and help you be prepared for that sales call per se. And if you do a good job of this, you can even get free rent from a landlord, which we talk about on this YouTube channel as well. Next one is my photo reel hack. This one is a cool video because it talks about something a lot of people don't think about, which is the order of your photos. If you click on an Airbnb listing, you're gonna see there's gonna be a hero photo. It's gonna be the one photo you see first, but when you click on a listing on your desktop, there's gonna be five photos that show up at the very top and then you can kind of scroll through and read the listing, but you're gonna see five photos when you click on a listing whether or not you wanted to. This truth causes us to have to respond by how we structure our photo reel. And a lot of real estate people just kind of list all their photos in like a room by room tour. And that's exactly what you don't want to do on Airbnb. So this will give you a better way to think about how to organize your, your first five photos and then all the photos after that. It's a really helpful video and it's not that long. So watch that video and get a fast improvement on your listing. The next one is where to Airbnb. This is market research one. This one's really cool because it helps you understand a, a truth. And the thing that I really try to deliver here is that cities that have regulations are actually good cities to Airbnb and because there's less supply. There's gonna be cities that are like Midwestern cities. This is another aspect of the video that we talk about. We talk about Midwestern cities being good because there's no competition. People aren't really doing Airbnb as much in the Midwest, but Dallas-Fort Worth, I'm here with like hundreds of listings. I'm here and my students are here with hundreds of listings. So you get a lot of competition in DFW, but in the Midwest, you get way less operators like myself. But then in some cities where regulations get tough, it's kind of harder to get permits like Austin, Texas. A lot of people give up on Austin because they just think it's too hard, but they don't read the regulations at length. So they don't know that you can actually do Airbnb in Austin. And I'm not gonna publicly talk about what we're doing in Austin to get our 40 something properties, but we've got them. And it's because we read the regulations completely instead of just giving up when they look tough. So slightly regulated markets are actually gonna be good for you. And that video is going to give you a new way to look at market research and what markets you choose to do business in. So that was just 22 videos of about 300 videos on the YouTube channel. And I hope that this can show you exactly how much this YouTube channel can provide you. And I want to encourage you to watch all of the videos that you can cram on this channel because they're free. There are a lot of people on this planet trying to sell you stuff. It's gonna happen. I even have a paid course, but my plan is to make you a host first, make you some money, and you're gonna hit a phase of growth that you can't get through on your own business acumen. And once you have you know, 50,000 a month coming in, you might pay me then, but I can teach you for free right now. 
and I fully intend to, for the rest of my life, continue to teach for free because I truly enjoy it. And the message I want to drive home here, if you can't discern the difference between like a true educator and a phony, you shouldn't be buying a course. If somebody impresses you with their money or impresses you with their car or shows you a 14 or 15 listing portfolio and makes you believe that that's good, if you are easily impressed upon that anybody can impress you, then you shouldn't buy a course because you're just not prepared enough. You don't know enough about the industry. I want you to use this YouTube channel as a free resource to get good enough at this, to know enough about this, that you can choose from one of the dozens of coaches out there. If you ever do buy somebody's product, you'll find one that really just vibes with you, but you can tell that they know what they're talking about. Because I want you to protect your money. This industry is not cheap. You can spend money on furniture. Instead of spending 5,000 or 10,000 or $20,000 in a program, which is $20,000 in a program's asinine, by the way, especially for a new person, even 5,000 on a program is a little steep for a brand new person. You can spend all that money on furniture and that furniture will make you money when you have an Airbnb. So while watching these videos, if you have any new questions, if any of the videos that I've given you for free beg a new question in your brain, you put that question in the comments and I read them and I'll make you new videos. That's kind of how this relationship works. And I'm so happy to be here and have this relationship with you. So one last request to subscribe so you don't miss any future videos to come. And thank you for being here. I absolutely love giving you this content and this value and I hope we can have a relationship moving forward. And as always, I'll see you on the other side.